Hi, calculus one students. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to find one-sided limits for rational functions. We're going to start with rational functions, but as you know, rational functions are not the only thing that have vertical asymptotes. We also have uh, logarithmic functions. We will come to that later. Okay, but for now, just rational functions. And we would like to find infinite limits, okay? So here's the method. You have it in your lecture notes as well, but let's just uh, go it through. And in this video, we'll do a single example uh, besides uh, outlaying the method. So the first method in order to figure out these limits is to actually replace x by a. And uh, you will have an asymptote. You will have an infinite limit, in other words, if the result is non-zero over zero. Okay, so that's step number one. Make sure that you have that. Step number two, you will factor the denominator to put it in this form. You want to extract the factor that's giving you the zero, okay? So the typically it's going to be x minus a, okay? Because you'll be able to, uh, the, like the denominator is going to be a polynomial, so you'll be able to factor it most of the times in a way that you have at least x minus a. Then you will replace x by a everywhere except in x minus a. So in, in, in except in this factor, in, in here, you will replace x by a minus or a plus, depending on which one-sided limit you're taking, and you will keep track of the sign of the fraction. And finally, depending on the overall sign of the fraction, if the sign is positive, the limit is infinity, and if the sign is negative, the limit is negative infinity. Okay, so I'm going to erase everything. You can obviously press pause if you want. And we're going to do one example right away, a simple example. <clears throat> okay. So the example I have in mind is the limit as x is approaching 3 from below of 2x minus x squared uh, over x squared minus 8x plus 15, okay? So you want to find what this limit is. So here we're doing step number 1. So to be very, very specific, what I replaced by 3 is x. So what we have is like 2 times 3 minus 3 squared uh, over 3 squared minus 8 times 3 plus 15. And then, of course, you grind some coffee. Okay, so you have like 6 minus 9, so negative 3. And then you have 9 minus uh, 18, so negative, uh, wait a minute. Oh no, 9 minus 24, so that gives us negative 15. Plus 15, 0, okay? So this is your verification of step number 1. So you have your here, non-zero. So non-zero over 0, okay? So you're getting that. So in this case, you proceed to the next step. And the next step, remember, is to factor the denominator, so he, right here, I'm doing step number two, okay? So I write the limit as, like, again, x is approaching 3 from below. The numerator, there's no point factoring it. You could, but it's not helpful, okay? So what you really want is to factor the denominator. And the denominator, uh, you probably remember monic factoring. So uh, x minus 3 times x minus is the correct factoring of this denominator. Okay. Now we're going to use step number three. Look at that. Okay, so in step number three, uh, what we're doing is we're replacing three everywhere. Now, the top, we already know that the result is going to give us negative three, okay? So there's no point recalculating it. Here, and now I'll go, I'll go rather slowly just to make sure that you, uh, you get it. Uh, what I replace here is not 3, but 3 minus, okay? Only in that factor over here, the factor that's giving us the 0. 
Okay, so you have 3 minus minus 3. And here I replace like 3 minus 5. So I replace 3 here as if nothing because it's not the factor that is giving us 0. It's going to give us a number that's not 0, which has a very definite sign. Okay, now look at this. We have negative 3 over, and this factor is simply, as you can see, negative 2. So let's uh, just get it out of the way. And now here's the tricky part. This is a number that is approaching 3 from below. Okay, so it's going to go to like, oh, it's approaching 3 from below. Sorry about that. So it's going to get to uh, 2.9, then 2.99, then 2.999, but it's going to stay below 3. As we subtract 3 from it, we're going to get a negative number that is approaching 0. So the way you should write this is like this, 0 from below. So what you, need, what you need to remember is that this is a negative. It's a negative number, right? It's a number that's approaching 0, but from the negative side. Okay. Now, uh, the only thing that's left to do is to simplify the, the signs of all the rest. So you'll have 3 over... Um, okay, 3 over 2 times, uh, again, 0, negative, okay? And now, you are doing the step number 4, okay? So, I'm going to do the step number 4 right here, and I'm, and I'm going to uh, underline it in uh, purple. So what you do is you look at the overall sign. You look at all the factors together. You look at the overall sign. And you see that you have positive numbers that are multiplying a negative number. Okay? So uh, the overall sign... is negative. So as a result, from step number 4, the limit will be negative infinity. And this is your final answer. All right, I hope this helped. Um, in the next video, I'm going to do uh, yet another example. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do the example one by one in the next couple of videos. And as soon as, there, as there's uh, other theory, I will let you know. So stay tuned.